Hello everybody and welcome back to another knockoff review. Haven't done one of these in a while and it's good to be back. This guy has been sitting in shipping limbo for some time and finally I have him in hand. It is the KO version of the MP44 Optimus Prime. He comes packaged in this plastic clamshell. We have the accessories shown. We do not get a trailer with him. So that's something you have to bear in mind and have to consider if you want to get separately. But we do get a fair few accessories nonetheless. And first impressions, he's not too bad. Now, I'll tell you now, he's not made of the same plastic as MP44. The plastic feels very different in hand. Now, if you own the TE Optimus Prime, or possibly the Magic Square Optimus Prime, then they are far more comparable in terms of plastic feel than we get with this guy. It may be because he doesn't really have a plastic, uh, kind of a painted coat over the reds and the blues. They are cast in that color. Uh, whereas the MP44 is painted. So maybe that's where the biggest difference lies, but he still feels like a very nice figure, but in hand, that is noticeably different. You can definitely tell which is the official and which is the KO, which is good because there's nothing that grinds my gears more is when people try and pass off a KO as an official product. Uh, we all know that KOs happen, uh, they're not going to stop, they're going to keep coming, but don't try and pretend there's something that they're not. A KO is exactly that, a knockoff of an original product, and this is a knockoff of that MP44. But my goodness, it is a bit yum. Everything on him looks as it should, minus that paint. He does come with his battle damage on his chest plugged in as standard. I think I actually prefer those softer kind of matte colors on him, especially the blues around the legs, kind of a powdered blue. Again, very similar to what we got with Magic Square. Here we have him alongside his official counterpart. Now, so you can see that my uh, KO doesn't have an insignia, although I did get an insignia there in a baggie, which should, in theory, just plug in. Now, this section here untabs. And this has got small pegs in, so we can tab that in to replace it. But you can see the noticeable difference between the two. It is mainly all in that shine. Now, the plastic is vastly different. I wouldn't say superior in the official. It's just different. Both extremely solid. Now, the MP44, we know, is plagued with knee problems. Uh, you have to kind of move the individual knee parts. So you move the leg, then move the knee pad up, then move the lower leg. This is not the case with the MP44. I've been messing around with the knees, bending him, getting him in the kind of Superman pose, etc. And I've had no issues whatsoever regarding those joints. So that in itself is a really good start. Something else that I noticed uh, more from the get-go than anything else is the protruding wrist peg on the KO doesn't look much from this angle. But when you have it in hand, it does seem to stick out a little bit more than the original. And if we look at the actual peg itself, just unfolding those fingers, uh, it is shaped differently. We do have a kind of smaller surface area for that metallic peg. Uh, it's just a different shape. It, it works, but it does seem to be more kind of intrusive on the figure as opposed to the original. I mean, even the width, the chest seems slightly different. So whether they've completely reverse engineered this, I don't know whether the scale is just slightly different. It's minute, if anything, but I mean, it still looks incredible. I know a lot of people didn't want to bite on MP44 because of those heavy costs. Uh, personally, I still think it is the best Optimus Prime to date, followed probably by the TE Prime, and then Magic Square, and then the MP10. But 
but this guy, including uh, considering his price uh, as a choice, uh, yeah, I would pick this over the TE Prime probably as an option. It's just a remarkable piece done to a much more affordable standard. It's not without its flaws. I mean, if we take a look at those knees, cop people are dreading that, wouldn't they? Me bending the knees. And uh, like I said, I don't have any fear about anything in here breaking. I've had a look, it all seems very solid, but we do have slightly untidier sections around these pegs where the pins have been entered. They're not as smooth as what we got with the Takara one. Uh, it's not finished to that level, I guess. But then that's what you're paying those extra couple of hundred dollars for, I guess, that and the trailer. But speaking of trailers, uh, let's take a look at the accessories we do actually get. Right, we get the section which allows our star screen to masquerade as Prime, as Starscream's head, uh, looks pretty decent. Nice clean paint applications. Uh, still wondering whether we're going to get this pretty much exact same head on the new MP Seekers when they get released. We get these blast effects. Uh, plenty of uh, bubbles in here, but by the looks of things, we get LED lights as well, which is Really nice. But we do get the odd bubble captured in amongst this section. I love how the axe looks, the Energon axe. Again, made of a nice solid plastic. But uh, kind of got that more of a dustier feel to it. Again, maybe due to the lack of paint. We get here's rifle we can bring round. Nothing out of the ordinary there, pretty much what we would expect from Prime. Do like the way that that folds down. Okay, good solid piece. We get his jetpack. So we can put the thrusters in there or we can have them coming out of his gun. Uh, no movement on these pieces here, they're a fixed unit. So it just slots down over his back panel piece, again done in this cast plastic color as opposed to that painted section. And you see what I mean here, look, it's a little bit rough around the edges there where the pins are located. I don't think there's gonna be any additional stress on that, uh, just be careful. I think it's actually where there's too much plastic kind of sitting over that lip there. That's just something to be mindful of. And then we get the two alternative heads as well. Love that battle damaged head. And then we've got that a little different kind of look for Prime. His appearance did change vastly in the G1 continuity. Uh, due to animation errors or animation styles. He looked very different at different points throughout, but you'll notice that none of these have painted eyes. I prefer the painted eyes. So I'm wondering whether there'll be an option to get different eyes for these or get a different head with those painted eyes. I just think that, I don't know. I know painted eyes aren't for everybody, but for me personally, I prefer them. They just look dead. Right, here he is with his provided Autobot insignia. You just pop the red panel piece out and place this one in. Now, to be honest with you, I don't think I'm a fan of that. I may pop the red piece back in and just get possibly like a toy hack sticker or insignia to something that will replace that. So I do prefer the white outline as opposed to the red. But that's definitely an option if you want an insignia for your figures. There we go, there is one. I've just removed his battle damage plate on his side as well. Let's take a quick look at his articulation. I just feel the MP44 is over in the background there judging us, isn't he? <laughs> Head can look up, down, left, 
and right we can tilt side to side we do have some extra neck motion there as well but that's designed to kind of sit back we've got really nice ratchets in those arms out to the side there we've got a butterfly joint here and there as well so the arms can come right the way around to the front there's an upper bicep rotation we have a lovely ratchet joint on that arm it comes all the way up rotation on those wrists really stiff rotation mind and we do get a pivot in and out on those as well we get articulated fingers we get tilt on that waist we get rotation on the waist as well we get an abdominal crunch on that waist albeit a, it's a bit of a mission to get that in and out but there is enough of a range once this is popped up and over we get hip skirts that slide upwards and in to the leg so bring this up allows the leg to come all the way forwards like so really nice solid leg joint there as well backwards like so out to the side nice high kick in there upper thigh rotation at the top of the groin and then coming down to these knees one two really nice bends on that knee again moving that back down come down to the feet pivot left and right and we've got up and down on a wonderfully tight ratchet that's just prime now just like his official predecessor he does have the likes of the matrix of leadership tucked away inside his chest so let's just open up open up his chest and we have matrix of leadership in there really nice and sparkly goodness tuck those in and push those in back together and we can install three lr44 batteries into this section here this unfolds and then we untab this unscrew this and there's three lr44s tucked in there we have an on off switch here and then we can just press these buttons And then to get it back, we just hold that button again. Back to our alternative language. So that's really good to know that we've got different options on now. I'm just a bit annoyed about those eyes still. I, as far as I can tell, there's no LED or anything inside there. So they just chose not to paint the eyes. Unless it's me completely uh, missing something. I've seen we've got the buttons on the back. That's where all the batteries go. I, I don't know. I just thought there would be space in there, but then there's no buttons either. 
So why did they not paint those eyes? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But all in all, I mean, it does look sensational, doesn't it? He's a big, solid piece. In terms of heft, he's actually heavier than MP44. I don't have my scales to hand, but I'm telling you now, he's definitely uh, more on par with like the TE-01 in comparison to the MP44 and heft-wise. But at the same time, obviously, we are missing that sheen that the MP44 offers. If you haven't seen the original MP44, we just slide the fists off, and then we grab our, like, Energon axe, for example, slide that back in, and that's how we attach. I actually really like how that goes. But man, oh man. Those are just really stiff joints on those wrists. But I don't think there's any fear of anything breaking though. It still feels like a remarkably solid piece. Uh, the heads are just ball mounted so we can just apply a little bit of pressure and just pop those off. And then we can bring in the likes of Starscream. Just... Who has a painted head? <laughs> there we go. Pop that head on. And then there's the space at the back here where these can slide in. They slide over this section in here. But uh, to give you an idea, I mean, that would look like that. You can check out my MP44 review for all of these extra little add-ons, uh, they don't really look that much different at all other than Prime's eyes. And of course we've got the battered Prime. My favorite of the bunch. Adore that one. And then we can bring in the battle damage, which just tabs in like so. Look at that. <laughs> Oh, love it. We can bring in his pistol. We can attach the Energon Blast. So it doesn't sit in there as well as I'd like. It's a bit wibbly wobbly. I think it's definitely more kind of keyed up to these jet thrusters. But love the options. Now, as gorgeous as he does look in his robot mode, we all want to see how he transforms up into his vehicle mode as well. Let's see how smooth it is, whether they've ironed out any of the kinks. Uh, I still think it's gonna be a pretty complex transformation, but we shall see. So without further ado, let's get him transformed up. All right, now to get Prime transformed up, let's uh, straighten up these arms first. And you want to uh, close up those fists with the thumbs down, and with the thumbs down, uh, the lower arm needs to be facing inwards, and inwards. Come down to the shoulders. This is gonna come out and hinge outwards, and this smokestack is going to roll forward. So again, on this side, bring this out and around, and roll that smokestack forwards. Come around to the hands. The arms are gonna come up to the front. These are gonna rotate they're upside down. Now these tabs are particularly tight on the KO, but they do come down. There we go, this lifts out, this comes up. This is going to lift, and this particular lip here is probably the most intimidating of the set, but it does go up, Just lift this forwards and up, and it'll flip over that lip like so, fold under, comes down, and folds back on itself like so. Now we have a tab just up here that we can just flick out like so. This is gonna bend out this elbow joint and then slowly apply a little bit of pressure and these arms just kind of tab in, slightly sliding in to that forearm piece, the torso piece is going to lift up and lift up and then we're going to pull it away from prime as well this 
extra armor piece that we've uh, popped on. Let's pop that off for now. These two pieces are going to separate and this is going to come up out of the way. This comes out of the way. The chest section is going to open. So we're just going to pull that apart, open that up, open that up, bring this whole piece down, bring this piece up, and then with that down, that's going to roll into itself. And with a little bit of pressure to push that in so it sits nicely under here. Poor old Prime, what a mess. Unhinge these underarms, they just come down. That's gonna slide down, and then as they come down, to push. So this bit is no longer flush, and these are gonna come down. These sections here are going to rotate, so it comes down to the side, like so, and that's gonna allow the wheel to come up. And as we get up to this point, it just clears this pegging point here, which allows the wheel to slide up on that slider, like so. These can then come in over the lip, and these are going to square off and push and lock into position on this groin piece. Grabbing this piece here, you want to just pull that away from the back of the neck, freeing up this whole neck panel. These windows are going to rotate around like so, freeing up this area here, which allows this piece to come down. Uh, the head is now going to come up and over, and this whole piece here is long as Prime's head is square, should, he says, tuck down nicely and slide into that void that we've just created. Ah, that went in there pretty nicely, didn't it? Where this section has come down, the backpack can then just come up. And we're then gonna start to unfold these lovely little pieces at the front here. So we've got this piece here, this is gonna come down and fold out like so. This then comes around and this is gonna form the grill. So again, on this side, just bring this piece down like so, bring this panel out, and then this piece comes around to the side, uh, starting to come together. Right, we can then uh, just bring these window panels in and in. That allows these pieces there to sit flat on top. This is then gonna come down, and with the windows, now in place, we should, he says, be able to plug all of this in correctly. Is that just gonna, is that gonna tab in there as it should? I believe so. There we go, and bring that panel down, just make sure everything's sitting on there as it should be. Applying a little bit of pressure, I want to make sure that this section here comes down and latches in. Bring the hip skirts up and over to the top. Bring these hip skirts up as well. The legs are then going to come down like this. And we then have this void here that we can now fill with these arms. So bring them down and those are just going to slide into position like so and then they're just going to push and lock into place make sure that those are tabbed in and then just square off the tops are starting to look a lot more like prime isn't it and down to the feet bring these around these are going to rotate and come down this piece here is going to come down lock like so and then come up. So again, on this side, bring this down, rotate that around. This is gonna come all the way down, lock, and then come up like so. There's these tabs just over these wheels. They lift up and 
lift up like so, allowing this section to come untabbed from the knee. There, like so. That's gonna come away and come down. And with those down, bring this in. And you wanna roll it so it's flat. Bring that one down, roll it so it's flat. These panels here are gonna come untapped. And this is gonna rock all the way down so it drops into this void. Like so, sits nicely. It's gonna come up and we have this panel here that rotates and these legs drop down like so and then push this panel inward. Uh, this here is going to untap like so. Roll around, it allows this section here to come untapped. This is going to roll up and over like so. This in itself is then gonna come up and then where we've got this section now in this void, this is gonna come up like so. This small piece here is on this really tight hinge. We need to make sure that it's rotated around so that when we close this panel off, that sits in there nicely and everything goes where it's meant to. And now we need to do that with both legs. So again, on this side, open this piece up. This piece here is gonna rotate, come up out of the way, allowing for this panel here to rotate around and around. This little piece is now going to rotate again and then with this small hinge, we'll push and make sure that rotates all the way around. That's my biggest fear about this piece is this panel here, but it worked okay, which is great. I need to untab, move this panel all the way down like so, bring this up, bring this around, Make sure that the leg has space to collapse inwards like this. This comes down, folds inwards and over, and then slide this in. This then comes up. And this whole piece is gonna tab in nicely. So it's all kind of coming together. We have a small latch just underneath here, which allows this piece here to come up. Uh, these are going to sit just underneath these chrome pieces, like so, and like so. And these should, he says, uh, if I line them up correctly, tab in together. Come on. Like so. And these tab in as well. And come on. There we go. Oh. tabs in on the underside of that panel there. This is gonna come over. These will sit here, they'll sit there. These panels at the side are now going to come out and they will unfold like so. This here is gonna come up and over. This will come down like this. This comes here like this. And this comes up and this is gonna rotate around. And don't forget just to move this piece up as we come around, because when we bring this in, they'll sit in behind this little squishy piece here. And then we're gonna line this panel piece up with the truck, all gonna tab in. And then this panel here, you can see that's gonna lock on to that tab there. And here we have them both transformed up. Uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of the vehicle mode, the MP44. I think they've done the best 
of what they could to get a good vehicle mode and a good bot mode. Uh, the downside of this is I cannot really get these to line up as thoroughly as I would like. I mean, it does tab in and it does sit square, but then uh, you just need to adjust and adjust and adjust and then eventually it kind of pops out again. But we've got lovely rubber tires on here and uh, when there's weight applied, everything does roll as it should. Uh, the overall back panel piece is pretty much identical. Again, obviously we're minus that flat, that uh, paint applications we had. Uh, we do still have sound chips. Exactly the same as what we got in bot mode. But uh, there we go. That's not bad. The transformation isn't fun for this figure at all. Uh, it's much like the MP36, it's just not enjoyable. It's actually probably a little bit more difficult with the KO for the sheer fact that it's tighter joints, therefore uh, making it slightly more difficult to get everything to go where we want it to. But I think overall the vehicle mode does probably look better. I don't particularly like the shine in vehicle mode for Prime. And for those curious, yes, the trailer attachment is exactly the same so if you do already have a trailer you can attach it to this figure and i would assume don't quote me on this but i would assume that we're going to get some sort of attachment or an alternative trailer there the attachment being if we want to attach this to the mp10 trailer and the uh, alternative trailer for this in case uh, we don't actually want to buy an mp44 just for its trailer to use with the KO. But there we have it, see we can bring in our uh, small figures, have them posed alongside. Uh, definitely not a fan of that insignia that we've got going on there. Definitely need to replace that. Yeah, like I said, it doesn't quite have it as nicely as I'd like, but then my uh, MP44 really doesn't either but I'll get this guy transformed up. He's definitely a gorgeous piece for the shelf and possibly a replacement for those who like the TE-01 but just wanted a little bit more articulation. I think is a good hybrid version of the two and I'm very grateful to have one of these in hand. Thanks again to TF Direct for making these reviews possible. Thanks again to all of my Patreons for their continued support. Make sure you check out all of their names at the end of this video. If you do want to support the channel, then click the link at the end of the video, it takes you through. And I have a couple of different tiers and a group chat as well, so we can all share our thoughts on up and coming figures. And until next time, from myself and the rest of the Collectibles household, thanks for watching, ah, uh, goodbye. Thank you.